stuff, yeah. So we have a couple callers. Why don't we go to those right now? Uh, welcome. You're on the air with the Trinity Channel. Uh, hello? Yes, welcome, dear caller. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Jeff, and uh, I just have some uh, questions for uh, you guys. Okay. Uh, I'm a Muslim, so I go to uh, mosque. I, uh, Jack, I just, Jack know, I'm sorry. Jack, Jack, just a moment. Uh, do you, is your TV on? We're hearing uh, an echo. Could you turn down the volume of your computer or your TV or something? We're having trouble understanding you. Everything is shut down. I'm in a clear... Uh, oh, I can hear you good. Department. Go right ahead. We, we can hear you much better now. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So basically, um, I've been raised a Muslim. I read the Quran. I read everything. Like I, I'm a high-practicing Muslim. So um, basically, um, I have some... Basically, when I go to mosque, the only person that I only think of is Jesus. And I don't know why. I'm not making this up. Um... Every time I, you know, I have Christian friends that, you know, they talk about Jesus and, you know, they uh, they talk how he's God and all that, all that stuff. So I asked them, uh, I asked one of my friends, why do I uh, think of Jesus when I go to mosque? And they say that, you know, um, Jesus is trying to pull you to the right path. He's trying to guide you, um, but I'm not sure, but... Um, Pastor, uh, I I believe in Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. Um, it's historically proven. You know, it's it's proven. Yes. Um, no religion can you know bash that. It's proven he's dead on the cross. Yes. But I, I just called into you know have some I have some doubts about him dying for my sin or you know did he die for my sin? Did he die for all of our sins? You know, I, I don't know that, but. Yeah. I strongly believe in Jesus, and, you know, long story short, I, I'm, I'm here to seek truth, and, you know, uh, belief is one aspect of it, but the truth, like, truth, you know, the truth of everything I, I, I want to know, and I called here, you know, to ask you, uh, you know, Jack. you guys are educated, so, you know, yeah. Jack, we're so thankful that you decided to call us tonight. I'll just say a few words. I'm going to turn it to my other two brothers. And if you have a specific question, we want you to ask that. But I would just say, Jack, uh, yes, indeed, God loves you. We believe that God loves every person on this earth. And you know, perhaps you've heard the verse that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I believe you could just substitute your name Jack in there. Uh, the whole purpose of Jesus coming was to die on the cross. And not just to die on the cross, Jack, but here's the idea. Jack, you know, all of us uh, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Adam and Eve were not born in heaven or in the Garden of Eden. They were born, uh, I mean, they were born in the Garden of Eden, but, but we're not born in the Garden of Eden. They were cast out. And so we're not born in the Garden of Eden. We're not born in heaven. We're born on earth. We're born in a place of separation from God and praise the Lord, the idea is we have fallen. Jesus Christ did come to die for you, but Jesus Christ came to live a perfect law life, a perfect life of righteousness and obeying the law and fulfilling the law. None of us can completely fulfill the law, but Jesus Christ did. This was the whole purpose that Jesus is God. He is God incarnate. God came. Nobody could fulfill His perfect law of righteousness in the Old Testament. And God cannot just capriciously change His mind. It's like, oh, well, this Old Testament is just too hard. I guess I'll just try something different. And so God Himself came in the person of Jesus Christ to perfectly fulfill the commands and the de demands of God's perfect, holy righteousness. Jesus fulfilled it all and then died as a sacrifice for you. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. And maybe you know in the Quran, it talks about uh, the ram that was replaced uh, Isaac. Of course, in the Hadith, it says Ishmael, but was sacrificed in place of Abraham's son. Even in the Quran, you find that. And in the Quran, it says, uh, The idea that we have ransomed 
Abraham's son with a mighty sacrifice. There, right there is actually an idea that is exactly what God has done for you, Jack, in Jesus Christ. He has paid for your sins. Jesus Christ has lived the righteous life you couldn't live. He has died on the cross and even tasted death, hell, sin, and the grave for you, dear brother, so that you might have eternal life by believing in him. Brothers, did you want to share something for Jack? Yeah, if you don't mind. Uh, Go ahead, Don. You know, in the Quran, it affirms that God protects his word. It, yeah. it affirms that God will always protect his word. It also says that the Old and New Testaments are part of the book. Yeah. God protects that. If you really believe that the Gospels have been protected, the Injil, then in them we can read a little bit more. And I'll just read you two quick verses I think that are really important to understand this. Mm. Uh, John 10, 17, and 18. This is Jesus speaking. He said, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. You notice mm. here he doesn't say, if I die, God can resurrect me. Hmm. He says, I lay down my life and I take it up again. Yes. Who has the power to raise someone from the dead? He said, no one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down. I have authority to take it up again. Hmm. This commandment I received from my Father. He hmm. has all the ability, all the power, all the authority that God has. There's nothing you can find in the Old Testament that God does that Jesus cannot do. And so when he says that he lays down his life, he didn't just lay it down for the people in front of him. He laid down his life for Pastor Joseph, for yes. David Wood, Hallelujah. for C.L., for Dwight, for Don Deal. He laid it down for you, brother. He yes. laid down his life for you. And if you follow him, then you'll see a change in your life. You'll see that the way the law convicts you of sin and makes you realize you're sinful, you'll realize that you have a new spirit within you, a spirit of joy and life Hallelujah. that will empower you to overcome that. Praise the Lord. Brother David, you want to add something to that? We'll get back to Jack's Oh, question. absolutely. And, and, yeah. and I agree with, uh, with Pastor Joseph um, that uh, we're very glad uh, you called. Um, we'll be doing shows for the next several days. Uh, please call again with, uh, with any more questions you might have. Uh, but 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 it, it, it's great that you're really you you're you're zeroing in on the heart of the matter, mm. and uh, you're seeing the importance of Jesus. And and yeah. I, I I would say this sounds like something spiritual, right? Yes. Um, yes. Many of the conversions of Muslims to Christianity happen through some sort of dream or vision mm -hmm. uh, of Jesus, right? Yes. Where 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 they're they're getting a vision of Jesus, and uh, so there's certainly something spiritual at work here. Plus. You, you, you were able to recognize that Jesus died by crucifixion, which Islam denies. And so, you know, being able to recognize, I mean, there, there are many Muslims who will just cling to chapter 4, verse 157 of the Quran and say, Jesus didn't die. The Quran says it, uh, not realizing that every shred of historical evidence we have, Christian sources, Jewish sources, Roman sources, all uh, confidently proclaim that Jesus died by crucifixion. And mm. scholars across the board, whether they're liberal Christian or conservative Christian or agnostic or atheist or Jewish, everyone agrees that Jesus died by crucifixion. It's a fact of history. But you are zeroing in on the other important issues, right? Namely, uh, is Jesus God? Did he die for sins? And right, guess what? That's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the gospel, right? That's the, that's the, you've zeroed in on the three crucial issues of the gospel, Jesus' death uh, for sins. Of course, the other is, is the resurrection, but Jesus' death for sins. Uh, is he divine? Is he God in flesh? And, uh, and of course, his resurrection from the dead. Um, but so, so, so I, guess, I guess the question would be, why, why are these things uh, true? And it's interesting that you're noticing, you're saying you, you, know, you just keep thinking about Jesus because I, I think I would have that problem if I were Muslim too. I think, mm. it, I think it would start to occur to me yeah. um, by reading the sources there's something special about Jesus, Amen. even in Islam, yes. that doesn't really fit with Islam, yes, right? that's right. Because on, Islam has sort of two competing uh, claims. One, that Jesus is, you know, a prophet in line with all the other prophets, and there's, you know, that's, that's just what's special about him, is yeah. he's a prophet. And yet, even Islam, he is so radically different yes. from everyone else. Jesus, in Islam, is born of a virgin. Who else is born of a virgin? Yes. That's it, right? I mean, God created Adam, but there was no other choice other than to right. just create Adam right. and then to create Eve from Adam. I mean, 
when there's no other human beings, that's all you can do is create Adam. And then with Eve, you can either create her from Adam or you can create her separate as well. There's no other options. Right. With Jesus, there's already humans uh, sure. reproducing. So there's something amazingly special about God saying, I'm just going to you know, have this one be born of a virgin. Then Jesus, even according to Islam, lives the most miraculous life in history. Mm -hmm. He's cleansing the lepers. He's raising the dead. Uh, and, and why? Why is he more miraculous than Muhammad, whose only mm -hmm. miracle is, is supposedly the Quran? Yeah. Uh, what's the point of making Jesus so special? Mm. And then when they want to kill Jesus, yeah. Allah doesn't allow it, even though tons of other prophets in the Muslim sources yeah. are killed yeah. by unbelievers. And Muhammad himself died, but he was poisoned by a Jewish right. woman, right? right. God did, Allah didn't protect him. Yeah. So Jesus has a miraculous beginning. He has a miraculous uh, life mm -hmm. and then a miraculous end to his life. In and, Islam. Yeah, and there's no reason. Then, of course, it calls him, you know, a uh, spirit from Allah, the, Ruh and Allah, the word of the Allah. Allah. And why is he so special? Let me just read one hadith that comes from Muhammad to, yes. to, to show how radically different Jesus is. Yes. Um, this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Um, if, you're, if you're a Shia, then, then, <laughs> then uh, you know, we can, look at, we can look at other sources. <laughs> uh, but, but most Muslims would, I mean, for, for Sunnis, which are, you know, between 80 and 90 percent of the Muslim population, this is their greatest source on the teachings of Muhammad. And that's Sahih al-Bukhari, 3286. The Prophet said, when any human being is mm -hmm. born, Satan touches him at both sides of the body with his two fingers. Yeah except Jesus, the son of Mary, whom Satan tried to touch but failed. So he touched the placenta cover instead. Yeah. Think about it. This is Muhammad saying Satan touches every human being Including born in the world, Muhammad. but could not touch Jesus. Now, why is Jesus so Amazing. different in every possible way Amazing. from everyone else? It makes, no different, it makes no sense if he's yeah. just a human being, if he's another prophet in the line of thousands of prophets. Yeah. And so why is it? And, and I happen to believe... Yeah that God left himself with witness, even in the midst of Muhammad yes. trying to, not, I don't believe Muhammad was deliberately trying to do away with the gospel, um, but even in the midst of all that, Allah leave, I mean, Allah, if, I don't know if, if you refer to God as Allah, Christians in the Middle East do, uh, but God or Allah leaves a witness to the truth for people who are interested yes. that can lead them out of Islam. People can recognize, yes. wait a minute, there's a problem here. The Quran is telling me Jesus is another prophet, like the other prophets, and yet is telling me he is so radically different from right. every other person in the world. Maybe I need to look at this person a little more closely, right? Yes. And once you do that and you want to learn about Jesus, what do you do? According to the Quran, the Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the gospel, right? Yes. Um, uh, if, you, if, you, if you've been through the sources, uh, chapter 3, verses 3 through 4 confirms the inspiration of the gospel. Um, Various passages say that no one can change Allah's words. Muslims today will say, oh, it's been corrupted and so on. The Quran repeatedly, and you can look this up, chapter uh, 6, verses, verses 114 to 115, chapter 18, verse 27, among many other passages, say that no one can change Allah's words. Human beings cannot do it. And then, uh, very interestingly, chapter 5, verse 47. By the way, uh, Jack, look up all these passages. Don't, you don't have to trust me. Look up these passages. See if they say what I, what I, what I say. Uh, chapter 5, verse 47, Allah says to Christians, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. Yeah. And he even calls us rebels if we don't judge by what Allah has mm -hmm. revealed in the gospel. And then in chapter 1094, Muhammad himself is told if he's doubting his revelations, go to the people of the book. So Muhammad, if you have doubts about what we're revealing to you, go to the people of the book. That's Christians and Jews. Ask us to see if his revelations line up. So if you're having doubts about Islam, which if you say Jesus is crucified, you are, even according to your own Quran, you're supposed to go to the people of the book to seek confirmation. And I think we have to go to a break in a second. Yeah, but we? that's exactly what Jack is doing right now. He's coming to the people of the book to find Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And, and, and after, after we go to the break, I know we have other callers and so yeah. on, but this is, this is important that, that he asked yeah. a, a really important question. Yes. Uh, and so maybe after the break, we'll yeah. uh, say, since you are coming to the people yes. of the book, what is Jesus? Why do we believe that, right? So why yeah. would we believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins? Right. And why do we believe that he is actually God? Because those, yes. from an Islamic perspective, those are very extreme claims. Yes. But we can actually, we can actually, uh, we can actually break it down. Thank you, David. Uh, Jack, are you still with us? Hello, Jack. Are you still there? Yes. Yes. Okay, Jack. We're going to have to go to a break. Uh, before we do, did you have a specific? 
question about what we just shared that we can, because we'd like you to stay on if you're willing through the break. Yeah, we'd like yeah. to keep talking with you. Do you have a specific question about what we just shared with you? Um, I don't have a, I have many, many, many questions, but I know you guys have a lot of callers, so I'll just narrow it down to this. I'll just tell you how um, I met Jesus. Yes. Um, basically, why I believe Jesus is the truth. Now, coming from a Muslim, um, is because my grandma, she was a, she's a high-practicing uh, Christian. Uh, she just had a cancer uh, just not uh, last week ago, and she was praying to Jesus. We were, we were praying to Allah. So, basically, uh, what happened is, somehow, maybe Jesus did something to her, maybe my God, or maybe Allah did something to her, but she uh, got healed. Praise and, the Lord. And this is not a joke. Yeah, Praise thank God. God. And But then, uh, just not three days ago, she she's back in the hospital, and she got worse. Mm. So I don't know why God would do this, but uh, yesterday she just uh, passed away. So uh, I don't know why would uh, God do this, but, you know, but I know there's a reason for everything, but, you know, I'm mad at God, but at the same time, you know, she lived a good life, and she believed in Jesus, and, you know, maybe she's going, she's in heaven, I don't know. Yes. But yes. I, I have many questions, but I just don't want to take your okay. time, guys. Well, um, Jack, Jack, thank yeah. you. You're, you're very sincere and very uh, considerate of us and our time. Um, we would like to speak with you just a little bit more after the break. We do have other callers. And also, uh, I would be delighted to speak with you, as I know David and Don would as well, off the air when we have more time to, uh, to share with you. But I just want to give you and our viewers one verse to consider over the break. Jesus says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Now, uh, that is also referring, we know, to the church, but I think it can be validly applied to people's hearts. And Jack, is the Lord Jesus knocking on your heart? I believe he may very well be. Maybe we can talk a little bit about that after we come back from this break. This is the Trinity Channel. We are live right here, and we thank you for watching. We'll be right back after this short break. Okay, Jack, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, Brother David Wood would just like to speak a few words uh, into your heart now. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll say a bit more. And if you want, if you want to discuss something uh, in depth, we, we already have shows scheduled for the next couple days, but yeah. I would be happy if you wanted to look at something in more detail uh, to, to scratch one of those topics and to just, to just focus on something you want to talk on uh, you know, uh, uh, sometime over the next couple days. Yeah. Um, but 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 basically, again, you, you're really getting to the to the heart of the matter. Uh, you know, why would we believe Jesus died on the cross for sins and so on? Why, why do we believe? Why do Christians believe what we believe about Jesus? Um, uh, but but basically, what you have uh, something like this: the Christianity Christianity starts with uh, a view of God that God is is perfect. He's perfect in his attributes, uh, and what you have is a God who is perfect in holiness and righteousness and justice has to punish all sins, right? It would be nice, it would be nice and wonderful uh, for God to just forgive people's sins. Mm. But if he does that, even though it's nice and merciful, it's not perfect justice. It's not perfect righteousness. A judge who let people, you know, just slide with whatever they did would not be a just judge. He might be a, a nice judge, but he wouldn't be a just judge fair judge who punishes sins. So God is perfect in his justice, but God is also perfect in his love and mercy. And so sinners present a sort of a problem here. What's God going to do? If God, you know, God's justice demands that sin is punished, God's love and mercy uh, makes him want to forgive us. And so what's going to happen? If he just forgives us, then he's not perfect in justice. If he punishes all, sends us all to hell, then that's not very loving. So how does God remain perfect in justice and perfect in love? Well, the message of the gospel is that 
God entered into creation as Jesus of Nazareth so that he could pay the price for our sins. Why do we believe this about Jesus? Because that's what he said, right? Jesus said, this is Mark 10, 45, he said that uh, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Mm. So Jesus says he's giving his life as a ransom for others. Um, during his life, Jesus makes all kinds of claims which no one but God should be making. Of course, you can point out passages where Jesus is claiming to be a human being and so on. Right, because that's what we believe. We believe he entered into creation. He took on a human nature. Um, but he also makes claims that only God can make. Uh, he even uses titles that, that God, even in the Quran, even in the Quran and the Old Testament, makes about himself. So, uh, for instance, one of Allah's titles in two of his 99 names are the first and the last. Uh, that's ch chapter 57, verse 3 of the Quran. Allah calls himself, as a title, the first and the last. Uh, Yahweh in the Old Testament says the exact same thing, thing about himself. Uh, he calls himself the first and the last. That is his name. Why? Because there's nothing that comes before him. There's nothing that comes after him. That is his title. No one can claim that. Uh, and yet, as Pastor Joseph quoted the book of Revelation, mm. if you read just chapter 1, uh, Jesus calls himself the first and the last. Yeah. And that's just one example. There are all kinds of other examples. Uh, but just let me read a, a, quick, uh, a quick verse from, uh, two verses from Jesus. And, and, and again, if you, if you want to do a whole show, I mean, we've done shows in the past. You could look them up. Um, but uh, Jesus in uh, chapter 5, verse 22 of the Gospel of John says, For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. Notice Jesus is saying that he is the one who will judge so that all will honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So Jesus says that he is the final judge, and it's so that we will understand that we have to honor Jesus in exactly the same way that we honor the Father. I don't know how familiar you are with Christian doctrine, but we believe God is a trinity. Uh, and so there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And why do we believe that? Because Jesus said, we didn't just think one day, hey, we want to believe in a trinity. Jesus claimed that. Um, and so we look at this and we say, hey, Jesus is making these claims about himself. He's saying that he died as a ransom uh, for others. Uh, he's saying that we have to honor him in exactly the same way we honor the Father. What mere human being could ever say that we have to honor him in exactly the same way we honor God? If Jesus, to paraphrase C.S. Lewis, if Jesus was not who he claimed to be, if he is not God, he was not a good person, he was not a, a great prophet, right. he was either insane or he was demon-possessed or something like that. But you cannot make the kinds of claims, you cannot, go, you cannot call yourself the first and the last, claim that you're the final judge of all mankind, claim that you're the Lord of the Sabbath, that you're the Lord of King David, that you're greater than God's temple. You can't make these claims about yourself and be a good person if they are not true. And so the alternatives really is Jesus was a very sick, evil, twisted person, or he is God entered into humanity. Why do we believe he is who? Because other people have made silly claims about themselves. Why we don't believe those silly claims. Why do we believe Jesus claims about himself? Jesus didn't just die on the cross. He rose from the dead. Yes. And hallelujah. you pointed out that we know as a matter of history that Jesus died on the cross. What's interesting is that even atheists and agnostic scholars, they won't admit that he rose from the dead, but they will grant all of the facts that I use when I debate atheists on Jesus' resurrection from the dead. So for instance, scholars from across the board, whether they're atheists, agnostics, uh, whatever, grant as a historical fact, not just that Jesus died by crucifixion, but that shortly thereafter, his followers were convinced that he had appeared to them risen from the dead, right? They don't grant that he actually rose, but they grant that Jesus' followers were convinced Jesus had appeared to them, and they grant that these men went to their bloody deaths, refusing to compromise on the gospel because they were convinced that Jesus had appeared to them. And so even atheists and agnostic scholars will grant that. Now, the question is, why did they believe that? This is what I dealt with. I come from an atheist background. Mm -hmm. And I ran into a Christian who made me so angry that I went and tried to study the resurrection because I understood that's what would refute mm. Christianity. And you can actually look up my testimony on, on YouTube. If you type in David Wood, why I am a Christian, mm. my story pops up. Um, but basically, this is what really bothered me. Why did these guys go to their deaths claiming that they had seen Jesus? 
if they were lying or made it up or they didn't, you know, they, they were just had a, you know, what did they see? They saw something. And here's the difference. See, there are, there are Muslims today who are willing to die for what they believe. There are Christians today who are willing to die for what they believe. But all of them believe based on something they heard, right? They heard a message from others, they believed it, and now they believe it so strongly they're willing to die for it. The disciples of Jesus were not believing in Christianity based on something they heard. They believed in it based on something they saw. They, believed, they saw Jesus appear to them. Now, what could have made them think that a man was appearing to them? I couldn't explain it through hallucinations. By definition, a hallucination is something that only occurs in one person's mind, right? Uh, if, I, if I'm the only one in this room who sees something, it's not probably there, right? I, I'm probably hallucinating. If everyone in this room sees the same thing, it's not a hallucination. It's actually there. So what could have convinced all of Jesus' disciples that they'd seen him risen from the dead? I thought about this and struggled with it, and the only thing I could think of was actually seeing him. But if they saw him appearing to them after his crucifixion, then he rose from the dead. If he rose from the dead, after living the most miraculous life in history, if he rose from the dead, then if anyone in history has God's stamp of approval, it's him. So if I'm going to listen to anyone tell me about God and what I should believe, it's that guy. I have to believe that guy, the one who lived the most miraculous life and then rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. I have to listen to him tell me what to believe about God. And this is the one who says, that we baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is the one who says that he, uh, he came to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the one who says that we have to honor him just as we honor the Father. And so why do I believe, why do I believe these things about Jesus? Because he said it and he's the one who rose from the dead. Hallelujah. So that is the heart of Christianity. What's interesting is that we're not just told that you know, Jesus said these things. We're told what the heart of the gospel is when his original followers go out and preach the gospel. The gospel is a message, and again, you zeroed in on it. The gospel is a message about how God gives us his righteousness. It's a message about Jesus' sacrificial death, his resurrection from the dead, and his divine nature. Um, we are told that that is the gospel. And what's interesting is we're also told that false prophets and false teachers are going to come and corrupt that message to keep people from the gospel. We get to the time of Muhammad. Muhammad agrees with us on so many things, right? Muhammad comes along and says, you Christians believe in God? So do I. You Christians believe Jesus was born of a virgin? So do I. You believe he performed all these miracles? So do I. You believe he's the Messiah? So do I. Muhammad is agreeing with us on all kinds of things. He agrees with us that Jesus is sinless. He agrees with us that uh, Jesus is unique. He agrees with us that Jesus is the Word of God. He agrees with us on everything except these three yeah. really important things. Yeah. Jesus didn't die on the cross. He didn't rise from the dead, and he isn't divine. The three core elements of the Christian gospel. Yeah. So from a Christian perspective, we're looking at Muhammad going, we've been expecting you, right? We've been expecting someone to come along and agree with us on everything except the core of the gospel mm. because we're told that false teachers and false prophets are going to come to corrupt that message to keep people from the gospel. But as we pointed out, I believe that God made sure that even in Islam there was enough to, pe to lead yes. people out of Islam to show them that they need to go to the people of the book to read the book and understand the gospel so that those who love the truth will be able to escape Islam. And we believe that's, what's, uh, that's, what's, uh, that's maybe what's happening with you, and we certainly hope that it is. Thank you, David. Jack, uh, we almost out of time with our program, but uh, we love you and we know that the Lord loves you and that's why we've taken so much time with you tonight. And uh, we would be very pleased to be able to talk with you off the air later. I think we'll be able to get your number if that's okay with you. But, uh, you know, the way that you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so there is a lot of questions to be answered, and we understand that, and we hope we've answered some tonight. We'd be glad to answer more. But, you know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow, Jack. Uh, even as you saw with your grandmother, uh, we do pray and hope that she is in heaven. And, uh, but, you know... We thought, you thought that she was going to live a lot longer. And, 
of course, all of us have to die once. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. God forbid, Jack, that, that you would die, but you need to know for sure. The Lord's going to return. He could return tonight. And so before we get off with you, I, I would be remiss if I did not give you an opportunity to pray with us now to make Jesus Christ your Lord. Uh, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jack, uh, are you willing and ready to pray with us tonight? Uh, yes, I am. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Jack, if, if you would just repeat after me, all right? Let's pray. Okay. Dear God, I believe in you. Dear God, I believe in you. And I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ. And I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ. I believe He died on the cross. Can you repeat that again? I believe He died on the cross. I, I strongly believe He died on the cross. And Lord, I believe that He was perfect and righteous in every way. And, and Lord, I believe that He was perfect and righteous. And Lord, I understand that he died in my place. And Lord, I understand that he died in my sins. Forgive me, God, of my sins. Uh, repeat that, please. Forgive me, God. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Oh, Lord, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Oh, Lord Jesus, uh, I believe Lord Jesus rose from the dead. And I promise to live a life following you. And I promise I will follow a life following you. Live a life following you. Oh, Lord God, I love you. Oh, Lord God, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for dying for my sins. Oh, thank you, Lord, for dying for my sins. And Lord, please give me the Holy Spirit. Oh, and Lord, please give me the Holy Spirit. Give me a peace. Give me a peace. That passes all understanding. That passes all understanding. That will keep my heart and mind. Um, that will keep my heart and mind? Or? Yes, my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for Jack. Oh, Lord God, we thank you so much. He has confessed with his mouth that your son, Jesus, is Lord. He has confessed that he died for his sins. Oh, Lord God, he's asked you to forgive his sins. And we know that you promised if he would confess with his mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in his heart that you raised him from the dead, that he will be saved saved based on the righteous and finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus said on the cross when he was dying, the last thing, it is finished. Oh, Lord God, thank you that Jack does not have to wonder anymore whether or not you love him. He does not have to wonder anymore whether or not you have forgiven his sins. He does not have to wonder anymore whether or not you sent Jesus to live the perfect life and to die in his place. But you have heard his confession. You alone can judge his heart. And Lord God, we believe he has confessed with his mouth the Lord Jesus. He has believed in his heart that you have raised him from the dead. So Lord, I just pray now that you would save Jack, that you would give him your Holy Spirit, that you would fill him with your Holy Spirit that you would guard his heart and mind through your Son, Christ Jesus, that your love and your peace would surround him, would fill him, that you would give him a great relief, that you would remove the burden of despair, that you would remove the burden of uncertainty, that you would let him know that you speak to Jack, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, Come unto me, all you who are, who are confused and trying to figure things out. Come unto me. 
Come unto me and, and take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. O oh Lord God, please give Jack's soul that rest in you, that perfect rest in the salvation of the shed blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill him with your peace. O oh Lord, fill him with your Spirit. Lord God, give him that assurance of salvation and help him, Lord, not to be afraid. O oh Lord God, as you come into his heart, cast out fear. Your word says that perfect love casts out fear and you have saved him because you've loved him and you made him in your image and we believe now based on his profession of faith, not by works but by grace he is saved. Your love, unmerited favor, by grace through his faith you have saved him and Lord God, we thank you for our brother in Christ our new brother in Christ and your new adopted son, Jack. We rejoice and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have a new brother.